Welcome to Technology Paul. Today we're diving into a topic I've covered before, but I feel needs to be revisited every couple of years as the landscape shifts. The perennial proposition of Spotify versus Apple Music. I'm one of those people who's all in on Apple. My iPhone, AirPods, and Apple Watch work seamlessly together, making Apple Music the obvious choice for my soundtrack. But the thing is, Spotify keeps reeling me back in. And there are a few reasons for that. For one, their unbeatable device compatibility means I can cast music to my Google Home speaker, something Apple Music just can't do. Plus, Spotify has this knack for helping me discover weirdly perfect song recommendations that aren't even on my radar. But Apple Music has some great features too, and arguably the best sound quality of the two. Not only that, this comparison comes down to more than just music now. Spotify is no longer just a music streaming service. They offer podcasts and even audiobooks. Of course, Apple has those too, but they offer them all as separate apps. So the question becomes, who does all of this audio entertainment better? Well, let's dig in. We're going to cover several areas for comparison today, but let's start with the size of the respective music catalogs. Naturally, you may wonder about the number of songs available on Spotify and Apple Music. The answer is that both streaming services have a vast library. However, Apple Music has over 100 million songs, while Spotify has slightly fewer at 82 million. That said, with tens of millions of tracks on both services, most of us wouldn't even notice it in our daily listening. Unless you absolutely live and breathe some incredibly niche music genre, both services essentially have what you need. There's a chance specific genres have a better representation in one versus the other. Some people, especially classical music fans, favor Apple Music for its slightly deeper back catalog. And sometimes Spotify has an edge in finding more underground or independent artists. Overall though, it's unlikely you'll see major holes in either their music platforms catalog. Okay, the catalog size debate is settled, but how does the music actually sound? Let's break it down. Spotify has different quality levels depending on if you're on the free or paid tier. The free tier has a bit rate of 160 kilobits per second, while the premium tier is 320 kilobits per second. This is generally more than acceptable for most people, especially if you're streaming on your phone or even through most headphones. It's not quite CD quality audio, but it's pretty close. Spotify did announce that they were working on releasing a high fidelity subscription level a while back, but they haven't announced when that will be available. And there haven't been any recent updates about it. Apple, on the other hand, has a standard bit rate of 256 kilobits per second, but has in recent years switched most of their catalog over to a better quality level called lossless, which is a 24 bit, 48 kilohertz stream, which means no detail is lost in the file itself. So Apple technically wins here because a lossless format is naturally going to have a better quality than a lossy format. Apple has also taken things further recently, bringing out their spatial audio tracks, for which they've partnered with Dolby Atmos to offer a more immersive music listening experience when you're wearing headphones. Some people are huge fans of spatial audio, and some people say it's just a gimmick. Either way, Apple does have better sound quality overall. But it's important to note that most people won't notice the difference. You won't notice the difference when playing music through your phone speakers, and you would undoubtedly need premium headphones to distinguish the sound quality differences between these two services truly. So with that said, it's mainly going to be audiophiles who will care about the distinct difference in sound quality between Spotify and Apple Music. On to our next category, music discovery. One of the things most people love about music streaming services is the ability to sample and listen to new tracks. And often the best way to do that is through the recommendations your streaming service provides you. Honestly, this is the segment where most people believe Spotify does really well and is the best in the business. Spotify has this fantastic ability to provide recommendations for new music that are absolutely on point. That's because Spotify's strength lies in its machine 
machine learning algorithms that analyze your listening habits and those of similar users and surface well-matched recommendations in your feed. The result is well-received playlists that are well-regarded in the music listening culture. For example, most Spotify users are religious about checking their Discover Weekly playlist. That's because it's a highly tailored playlist updated every Monday, designed to recommend music that is very similar to your previous listening habits. And if you're looking for a mix of your favorite tunes and genres, they have multiple daily mix playlists for you to jam out to. If you're looking for brand new tunes, check out your release radar, which is full of recently released music. Spotify has tons of curated playlists beyond these algorithmic ones. Just hit the search tab and browse the different genres available. Some of their popular playlists are New Music Friday, Hot Hits, Today's Top Hits, Rap Caviar, Hot Country, and many, many more. Spotify is also pushing the boundaries looking for new ways to bring you interesting sounds. In the search tab, they have a TikTok style song player where you get clips of songs synced up to video, which could be clips from the music video or visualizations. It's an easy way to listen and discover music. Not only that, but Spotify has their new AI DJ feature. When you activate the DJ, it actually speaks to you like it's hosting a radio show or something, but it's your own personal radio station. The DJ will play tunes that you are currently listening to and songs you've listened to in the past, and it will introduce new stuff to you as well. Obviously, this is all algorithmically generated like much of their other content. Still, it almost feels even more personalized with the DJ occasionally interjecting, speaking to you and changing the content. So I have to hand it to Spotify for really trying some cool outside the box ideas for its users. On the other hand, Apple Music has its own methods of helping you discover and enjoy music on its platform. Like Discover Weekly, Apple has new music mix, which updates weekly. The music they throw in here is geared towards your musical preferences, but Apple is a bit broader in its recommendations. Some people would find that to be a good thing and others would prefer the more super targeted approach of Spotify. They also have a favorites mix, a chill mix, and a get up mix, which are algorithmic playlists, mostly playing music from your listening history, but also sprinkling in some new tracks here and there. The browse tab offers a world of discovery on its own. Apple has tons and tons of curated playlists to choose from. There are too many to name, but I'll name a few. You've got Today's Country, Rap Life, A-List Pop, R&B Now, Today's Acoustic, Everyday Hits, Breaking Dance, and so on. Now, Apple's wildcard option for music discovery is, wait for it, radio. Yes, radio. I said Spotify has their DJ, which feels like a personal radio station. Well, Apple has an actual radio station for you. In fact, they have three. Their flagship station is Apple Music One. It's a live radio station streaming 24 seven, and it has a broad mix of current hits, interviews with trending artists, and covers major album releases. Then Apple Music Hits is all about today's big hits, and Apple Music Country is all about country specifically as a genre. Some people say radio is dying, but there are still a ton of people who love it. So it's no surprise that radio is a prominent feature of Apple Music. Sometimes it is just really easy to pop a radio station on and enjoy the tunes rather than go playlist hunting. Even though both platforms have robust music discovery features, I think Spotify has a slight edge because their recommendations are more hyper tailored to your music tastes and because because they have some out of the box music discovery features like their AI DJ. Let's shift over to the user interface of each app. Spotify has a simple three tab design. You get home, search, and your library. On the home tab, you have quick links to serve as recommended items, including your AI DJ, your Discover Weekly, and so on. Below that, you have your daily mixes and your release radar. Then you have recently played and even more recommendations below. Things like your top mixes, new recommendations based on your recent listening, and even podcast episodes. Further down, you can see these card style recommendations for different artists, songs, and playlists, which 
kind of look like Instagram stories. You can tap over to the next story, for example, and then click play to play the playlist. The search tab is where you have your standard searching and browsing experience and the TikTok style videos I mentioned earlier. And your library is self-explanatory with the one neat feature is this great scroll down experience that shows you different songs, artists, and playlists you've added over the years. Within each tab, you'll notice you can see music, podcasts, and audiobooks. They all have these card style previews of the various podcasts and audiobooks. And it's all algorithmically recommended to you, just like the music. I find this interface is great for getting you into things. You can quickly sample the content and soon you're sucked in wanting to hear more. It's great for discovery for sure because you're getting a mix of podcasts or books you might have seen before, but many new ones as well. When it comes to audiobooks, there is a selection of free ones, which I assume are public licensed content. It's mostly classics, but of course you can purchase books as well. It seems like they have pretty much all the latest books you might want, but just be careful about prices. You should shop around from other sources as I've noticed many of their books are priced higher than what they are on Audible, for example. Yet some are actually cheaper. So it's worth doing a quick comparison before you click purchase. Oh, and you can't purchase it in the mobile app. You have to go to the website or desktop app because Spotify doesn't want to pay Apple 30% of the purchase price. Thanks, Apple. Now, when it comes to Apple, I will need to show you three different apps. That's because music, podcasts, and audiobooks are three different apps. So let's take a look. The music app has five tabs, home, browse, radio, library, and search. The home tab is where you'll find your top picks, such as recommended playlists, your personal station, recently played music, your made for you playlists, and a whole lot of recommendations. The browse tab is more of the same. For example, you get now in spatial audio, best new songs, daily charts, and further down music by moods, browse by genre, decades, and even music videos. Actually, that's one thing that Apple has over Spotify is a dedicated music videos section. You can find music videos for the latest hot tracks as well as Apple's own Apple Music Live concert series videos. I've got videos here today from Usher, Justin Timberlake, Dua Lipa, and more. So that's definitely a nice feature for when you're in the mood to watch some videos. If you are craving that MTV experience, you can turn on Apple Music TV, which is just not non-stop videos on a live feed 24 seven. There's the radio tab we mentioned before, and then you have library and search. One cool feature that you'll find in search is Apple Music Sing. It's a karaoke-like feature built directly into the app. It offers real-time lyrics, it's perfectly synced with the music, just like real karaoke. Plus the vocals are adjustable, which means you can lower the volume of a song's original vocals. So I guess now you can have a karaoke party right from your phone. Shifting over to podcasts, you just have to open the podcast app on your iPhone and start exploring. Obviously, one of the nice things about having a separate app for podcasts is that you can fully immerse the user in the world of podcasts rather than having a split focus. Within Apple's app, you have Up Next, which shows you these cards for episodes you've been listening to or that are newly released in your feed. It's a great way to scroll through your followed podcasts and jump into any episodes you think look interesting. Further down, there are more recommendations like podcasts you might like, popular shows, what we're loving, more to discover, and so on. The browse tab is more of the same with tons of recommendations, featured channels, and access to the category lists. Apple Podcasts has an interesting feature called paid subscriptions. Of course, podcasts are free, but paid subscriptions are an option on many podcast channels, allowing you to eliminate ads for a small monthly fee. Some subscriptions even offer exclusive episodes. Then there's the Books app. And unlike Spotify, Apple offers both eBooks and audiobooks. There are two tabs to find a great read. One is the bookstore, which is dedicated to eBooks. The other is audiobooks. You can find plenty of recommendations for great audiobooks. You can purchase them right in the app and the prices are very competitive as well. Let's shift gears though and talk about pricing. Features and user interface are important, 
but sometimes it comes down to dollars and cents. To start off, Spotify wins for the lowest price because they have the free tier. Now the free tier has serious limitations, but again, it's completely free. It's true that there are ads interspersed in your listening and you can only shuffle play playlists. As well, you can only skip six songs per hour and even the audio quality is a bit lower. But the point is, it's an entry point. It gets people using the service, hoping they enjoy it enough to upgrade. The premium subscriptions start with the individual plans. Apple and Spotify both charge $10.99 per month for one premium user. Plus, Spotify has a duo plan, which is perfect for couples. For just $14.99 per month, you get two premium memberships. Both services have family plans as well, which offer all plan benefits for up to six accounts under the same household address. It will cost you $16.99 per month, whether you use Apple Music or Spotify. If you're a student, Spotify and Apple both have you covered with their student plans, which is $5.99 on both Apple Music and Spotify. Okay, so what's my conclusion? Well, let's break it down by category. Right off the top, we discussed the total music catalog. Apple Music has a slight edge here with over 100 million songs. Again, this won't be noticeable if you're looking for music from any of the major labels. It would only be apparent if you're looking at relatively niche music and artists. When it comes to the audio quality, Apple wins again because Apple uses their lossless format, which is about as close as you can get to the original sound. They beat Spotify's 320 kilobit per second streaming quality. Will you notice this audio difference from your phone speaker or even AirPods? No, you won't. This is primarily important if you're using high-end audio equipment. Still, it's something to consider. When it comes to music and even podcast discovery, Spotify wins this category handily. Spotify has the best algorithms in the business with hyper-targeted recommendations that result in the best-in-class Discover Weekly and Release Radar. They are also driving innovation with the AI DJ feature and the Instagram and TikTok style music discovery features. If you're looking to find exciting music recommendations that match your musical preferences, Spotify is where it's at. However, Apple does win the bonus feature category since they have a couple of hidden features I mentioned in Apple Music Sing and Music Videos. These are lesser used features, but they're a nice touch. Music videos particularly are a great feature once in a while. A lot of people throw YouTube on for a music video watching experience. So the fact that you can do that now right from Apple Music is a great touch. I also think that Spotify wins the user experience category, which encompasses ease of use and user interface. That's because you can get music, podcasts, and audiobooks rather than the app switching approach from Apple. Spotify is approaching its app as an audio entertainment app rather than just a music app. I think sometimes if you're on your morning commute, you would enjoy the experience of just pulling up the Spotify app and seeing what comes up. You can see what's new in your music feed, listen to a new episode of your favorite podcast, or dive back into the book you're listening to. When it comes down to brass tacks, Spotify wins the pricing side of things. The free tier isn't fully featured, but it's hard to argue with free. Plus, they have the duo plan for couples, which Apple doesn't have. However, Apple and Spotify charge the same prices for the most part, so there's only a slight edge here. What do you think about these two services? Have you tried both or been loyal to one service the whole time? Which audio entertainment company is winning in terms of overall experience? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and click that like button as it helps more people find this content. And of course, subscribe to my channel for more tech videos updated regularly. My main focus is on gadgets, smart home tech, and subscription services. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe. Thanks, and we'll catch you in the next one.